was a dark day when I lost my faith. It wasn't the pony I thought I'd be. You know, when I thought about going back and doing the other episodes of Season 4 that I missed, I thought I'd do a review like I did for every other episode of Season 4, but you know what? I've got the time, why don't I do a proper analysis? I bet you'll never guess what I'm talking about about Flight to the Finish. Or, well, I suppose even if you couldn't guess, you could always, you know, read the title of the video. Anyway, I had every intention of covering this topic somewhere around Ponyville Confidential or something like that, and then this episode aired. Which means now I have no idea what to talk about for Ponyville Confidential. Hmm. Well, that's miles away. I suppose I should start out by really defining what disability is, or how I'm going to use it in my video. For the purposes of this video, I'm going to define disability as the inability to overcome a physical obstacle. I'm going to stick with physical because mental disability is a whole other can of worms that I am not prepared to go into today. As an example, I can't run a marathon. If you were to put me at the starting line of a marathon, I would not reach the finish line by my own power. However, if I were to somehow become motivated to train myself for like a month or a year, maybe I could do it. And that's what makes me not disabled, because if I really were to try, I could overcome my obstacles. But I'm just really lazy. But there are some who can't overcome the hand that they were dealt by mere effort. So by this definition, there are actually quite a number of disabled ponies in Equestria. In fact, there are only four nameable, completely abled ponies in Equestria. Celestia, Luna, Cadence, and now Twilight. I mean, think about it. For the most part, unicorns can't fly, Pegasi can't hold things properly with magic, and Earth ponies really can't do anything, actually. So if you think about it, about two-thirds of the population can't fly either. So why is it so extraordinary that Scootaloo is part of the two-thirds? The fact of the matter is that we expect her to be able to fly because she's a Pegasus. She has wings. But that's a little unfair if you think about it. When I was a kid, I was pretty tall for my age, and so people assumed that I'd be good at basketball. I'm gonna tell you right now, Height does not equal good at basketball. I sucked at basketball and had no intention or ability to pursue that as a career. Maybe Scootaloo can actually be defined by more than just her race. So in the same way that I wouldn't want to take away a Pegasus ability to fly or a Unicorn's ability to use magic to make us all equal, I wouldn't want to force Scootaloo to fly to put her on equal ground, so to speak. Actually, the really sad thing about all this is that the only one who expects Scootaloo to fly, except for these bitches, is Scootaloo herself. She idolizes Rainbow Dash and wants to be just like her. But what I hope she took from this experience is that while she can still look up to Rainbow Dash, she has to take the lessons and apply them to herself. Just like those in the Bronin community can look up to Rainbow Dash for inspiration, but they also know that they can't fly, or at least I hope they know that they can't fly. So to those who are still holding a candle for Scootaloo learning how to fly, I say, why on earth would you want her to be normal? Personally, I love her for the flightless chicken that she is. And one final note. Sometimes, acknowledging a weakness can be just as much of a victory as overcoming one. Sailor Moon says, catch you on the flip side. Isn't it great to be?